before I get started in this video, I forgot to mention that this video, this uh, video clip, or the uh, person I'm doing the video on was the response kind of, it was a guy that was on Apostle Tahar's page. Uh, I think the video was called Vocab Malone, You Can't, You Cannot Win, or something like that. So that's this guy, Jesus Firstly. Uh, this is the one uh, this video is talking about. 2,000 years ago, Jesus came, died for your sins. You ain't got to go to hell. The Bible says, out of one blood, God made all the ethnicities of the world. Hallelujah. The Bible is the only document that is against racism. The Bible is the only document that says that no man is better than another man. The Bible is the only document that says that no man is less than another man because God created all the ethnicities of the world from one blood. Because God created all the ethnicities of the world from one blood. Blood. That means you're my brother. That means you're my sister. That means I'm your brother. I love you. Hallelujah. How many times have you taken something that didn't belong to you? And I believe the Bible when it says that God made all men from one man. All ethnicities from one blood. That means it doesn't matter if you're white, if you're brown, if you're black, if you're pink. God loves you. What the Christian slaveholders, and I say Christian slaveholders with quotation marks around it, I think we all have to keep that in mind. What the Christian slaveholders did with their Bibles was to take Paul's descriptions of the New Testament world. Slaves, obey your masters, which was descriptive of the state of life, and to take that as prescriptive. Therefore, masters may have slaves, and slaves must obey in all situations. So this was a type of literal interpretation, and they could claim that they were being faithful to Scripture, that they were interpreting Scripture literally. Now, of course, to do that, they had to ignore all of the minor prophets and everything that was said in the Old Testament about social justice. And so, of course, it was a very selective literalism, which we still see in Christianity today. And so, of course, it was a very selective literalism, which we still see in Christianity today. And so, of course, it was a very selective literalism, which we still see in Christianity today. But the principle was distorted in order to support slavery. ...called Slave Bible. Remarkable not for what's in it, but for what's not. So about 90% of the Old Testament's been removed and about 50% of the New Testament's been removed. Uh, to put it another way, a normal King James Version has 1,189 chapters in it. Uh, the Slave Bible has only 232. Missing are chapters and verses that might have encouraged uprisings. Redacted. No story of Moses demanding Pharaoh, let my people go. go and no Jeremiah. Woe unto him that useth his neighbor's service without wages. What they've left in are verses such as Ephesians 6, 5, which is the famous verse, slaves be obedient to your master. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Shalom and honors to you other elder brethren, brothers, followers, a few sisters. Mainly shalom to the elect. So anyway, I want to go straight on this video. Had a little debate on the comment board. You know us, we don't go back and forth very long on here. We're going to make a video out of it. So today, it's this guy. Jesus, firstly, I don't know his real name. I didn't even research it. But it's this guy that you see here uh, claiming to be a Christian. So, it's a couple things he went on a comment board. So, I'll, I'll just get right to it. He quoted Revelation 7 and 9. Okay. We'll get that as well. And it's something else he said because I left a comment. 
I said, you know, Revelation 7 and 9 was talking about the Israelites, and we're going to go deeper into that. Um, he said, um, I said, if it wasn't, if we were still bound down to white Jesus, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. You would have nothing to say as long as we was running up in those churches, you know, but all of a sudden the truth comes out. Uh, now it's a, it's, it's not, it's not about race, but it was about race when you kept that white Jesus up. So he goes on to say the promised seed is Christ, right? Whatever Christ that is, we know there's a savior, but his name wasn't Christ. The promised seed is Christ. The scripture says there's only one seed. <laughs> okay. Not many. Paul makes that very clear. You're stealing from Yeshua, the, the Messiah. Now they want to call him Yeshua. These Christians are phony. Applying what only to be on him to yourself. The Jews made the same mistake when Jesus walked the earth. So I left a... Um, a comment, which now actually a comment, I left a scripture, First Peter, First Peter two and nine. But ye are a chosen generation. See, this is in the New Testament. That's how I went there. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of Him who have called you out of the darkness and into a marvelous light. Right. What the scriptures say, but this is what these guys say. So let's go. Well, I I think I already left Leviticus twenty and twenty nine in there. The Lord has severed you from other people. So I think I want to go just straight on in to Revelation seven and nine, um, and it's going to break down itself as I go along. Revelation seven and nine. Now, when you read Revelation 7, this is going to help get a more understanding of 7 and 9. These guys, they call us precept pickers, right? We say precept upon precept because it's a full Bible. And to give pe the, the people the understanding, you have it, you know, and it is broken into precepts. So, but it's up to you to go read the whole thing, you know, as far as that, what that precept is pertaining to. Okay, so in Revelation 7, it talks about, the uh, 144,000, right? And then numbers all the tribes, right? So then when it gets down to 7 and 9, it says, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne, but they just totally ignored from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000, the tribe of Zebulon, 12,000, so, so let's see what this great multitude is talking about. So to understand the great multitude, let's go on over here. Okay, so let me keep reading. Their tongues are still before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So after this, I beheld, lo, a great multitude. So let's go to the great multitude. Let's see what the great multitude is. See what that's talking about. Let's go here. If I can find it. Because you got to go to the beginning. Genesis 32 and verse 12. Um, let me go to 11. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. Remember, he said, the Lord created every man out of one blood. Well, yep, well, he separated the nations. Right? Uh, uh, Ezra 6 and 54. Anyway, deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother and the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother of, with my children. Goes on to say, and thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea. So I don't know what the heck this guy's talking about, which cannot be measured, numbered to the multitude. Let's read that again. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea. Did not the Lord do that? Which can not be measured or which cannot be numbered for the multitude. We can also read this in Romans, the ninth chapter, right? 9 and 26 or something like that. So who's the, the seed? 
He's well, so what are they saying? So this Christian here will say, well, wait a minute. Let's see. That's talking about the all nations. Well, let's go right on. Run over here to Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place that was sent unto them, ye are not my people. There should be sent unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. We the only ones fit these prophecies, man. We the only ones fit these prophecies. That's it. You know, and we in in the ones that may look like other nations, but the Israelites fit the prophecies. So we see here in Hosea one and ten, saying the same thing in Genesis thirty uh, thirty two. Right. It's saying the same thing over here in Genesis thirty two, and when he said. I will make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered or for a multitude. But then you go to Hosea, it says, uh, shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Okay? So now let's go on back over here to Revelation 7 and 9. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude. So now we understand the multitude, which no man could number of all nations. So, well, let's go into nations. Right, let's see what the nations say. And it all break down itself. He even brought in ethnos. So when you look at the definitions, when we look at I remember I used to always say through the spirit, there was homeographs in a Bible where words will spell the same and have different meaning. Do you know vocab is now bringing that up to try to justify his doctrine? Anyway, um, it says here, we say, uh, where we at again? Nations. It says here, a multitude. Here we go. We see this word again. Whether men or beasts associated living together. So you'll have a word and you'll have so many different definitions of it because it got to apply to the right proper context. So we know a company, troop, or swarm, a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus. And um, I looked up that word genus. It goes back to phylogeny. Um, when I looked it up, it looked. It goes back to phylogeny. Well, let me look it back up again. That word genus, which goes back to gene, genetics. Um, a biological classification, ranking between the family and species. Right. Let me go here. See what this says. Phylogenetic. Philo or phylogenetic, right? Of relating of the same phylogeny, the same genetics. Um, natural evolution relationships. Um, so basically, racial. Oh, it says here racial. It says here racial. Racial. A relating to based on the on a race, the same race. <laughs> You are cut the same race as what we see in nation. Okay, so let's go on down. Great nations of multitudes. We saw who the multitudes were. The nations. Um, after that, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations. Kindreds, peoples. We'll get kindreds as well. Because kindreds is the one. Peoples. It says a people, group, tribe, nation, all those who are the same stock and language. That's crazy. This is what it says. This is what it says. Okay, let's go to Kindreds. G5543. G5543. Let's see what Kindreds says. Um... I don't even think I pulled that up. Kindreds is, well, I can quote that really. I did it so many times. Kindreds is G5543. Let's see what that says. It says a tribe in the New Testament, the NT, all persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch of Jacob, a nation people. Wait a minute. 
I thought it was everybody. Uh, let's go to the, this is what I decided to do. Go to the Christian Standard Bible. And really, the Christian Standard Bible had it pretty much correct because this Christian Standard Bible doesn't say kindred. It says tribe. When it says all nations, kindreds, really, it just says the nation, kindred, the tribe. Let me go back here. It says basically all, all nations, kindreds, and tribes. So it's about the tribe. Let me go back and beheld all nations and kindreds. It says in the, C, the CSB. Let's see what it says. It says, After look, behold, there was a vast multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Right? And when you look up the word tribe, you know what it says? Israelites. This is why we read Revelation 7, and it was breaking down all the tribes of every nation. Right? Which they were nations they were Israelites divided into nations with an S uh, and different languages. How did this happen? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and let's go to 64. Deuteronomy 28. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even into the other. And that there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou, thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. It's just that simple. And there you have it, Revelation 7 and 9, and, you know, probably quite a few more precepts, I'm pretty sure, and the breaking down who the multitudes are, right? The nations, the peoples, with the tongues, following the different gods, who will wake up and come back. So, um, clearly, Everything this man says is completely wrong. And we're going to stand by it. And Christianity, you know, will prevail no more. You're in your, you're in your demise. You're at the end of your rope for you Christians. That's all I have on that. Shalom.